Now we're going to go ahead and create our default.aspx page and play around a little bit with inline styles. So let's go ahead and on our root project and ex solution explorer, right click and add a new item. Again, Visual C Sharp is the language that we're going to be using for this demo. Default.aspx is going to be the page name. And make sure you select your checkbox place code in a separate file. Make sure web form is selected and select add. We're going to go over to the design view. And in design view, we're going to go up and look at our div. And if you click in this div, you actually see your embedded HTML tags. And right now we're sitting in the div tag. So what I want to do is go ahead and type in some text. We're going to go ahead and highlight that text. And we're going to look up here in our styles view. And we're going to actually change under our block format and change this to a heading one. Again, you'll see that H1 is now an added or embedded tag inside the div tag. Additionally, we can go ahead and hit enter. And a new paragraph tag is created for us again. You can see we're still inside of our div, but we now are inside of a paragraph tag. So let's go ahead and add some more content. And hit enter. And we're going to create a new paragraph tag and type in some more content. By the way, that is content that I've taken directly from the book. Not really relevant to the website, but at least it gives you an idea. Now what we want to do is go ahead and look at what happened here. It automatically picked up that this is going to be a link to a URL, www.stpetersburgcollege.com. Um, we're going to go ahead and add additional content. Let's say, for example, paying a visit. We're going to go and modify that display and change the foreground color. Simply go up here to our styles, click foreground color, and choose a color. Select OK. By the way, you can manually type this in or select the color. Next, we're going to go ahead and select more content Maybe using concerts, pictures. And we'll go ahead and bold that content. Again, just give you a rough idea oops, I spoke that wrong, of how to use your styles. In the next chapter, we're actually going to go into much greater detail in using our styles.css and using the styles tools included with Visual Studio 2010. Now let's run our default.aspx page. You'll see that we have our foreground color changed to dark blue. It automatically picked up a hyperlink for www.stpetersburgcollege.com and it bolded our reviews and concert pictures. Review source. And you can see that the HTML was applied appropriately for our anchor tag. Again, a style for paying a visit. Again, the style is just changing it to this color up here, which we'll discuss later. Okay, let's start by creating a table demo.aspx file for this demonstration. And what I'd like to do is go to your Solution Explorer, select Demo, the Demo folder, right click, 
and create add new item. We want to make sure that we go ahead and select the Visual C Sharp again as our default. Web form. And then go ahead and give the file name table demo asbx. Make sure that the checkbox for place code and separate file is selected. And click add. We'll see that our file has been added in our demo folder. So let's go to the design view. Go ahead and select in your div. And then move up to your menu and select table. Insert table. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select three rows and two columns. And the default is currently two rows, two columns. And we'll leave everything else defaulted. Select OK. And we're going to go ahead and add three rows of data first. We're going to add a numbered list. Actually, let's go ahead and add a bulleted list first. And then we'll move over to the second column, first row. And let's just go ahead and get a list of items in a bullet format. And we can actually do this quickly by just clicking on this toolbar icon. We can also go over to Format, Bullets and Numbering, and have a few more options available to us. I'm going to go to the middle tab, Plain Bullets, and select the round bulleted items. Select OK. And then in our bulleted list, we can go ahead and choose, let's say, for example, various programming language languages. Just as an example. Now notice that this is not well formatted. The bolted list column or the first column is too large and it will change relative to the other content that exists within this column. So we're going to want to head, go ahead and set that as a fixed length. And you do that by moving your mouse into the middle and sliding to the left by left clicking and dragging. Let's go ahead and set it to 200 pixels. Next, we're going to go into row number two, column number one, and go ahead and add a numbered list. Move to our second column. Again, go to our format menu, bullets and numbering. And this time, we're going to want to go to the third tab, numbers. We're going to select the second option in the top row. And we're going to select OK. And we're going to go ahead and get a list. Hmm. Let's go ahead and get three quick items. You can put whatever you want in there. And then let's go to the third row first column. And what we're going to do in the third row, first column is go ahead and create a link. Actually, the link will be in the second column. Uh, first column will just be a reference to that link. So we'll go ahead and call it link. We'll tab over and we'll give it a name. Go to St. Petersburg College's website. And that's just nothing more than text, but we're going to highlight that entire length of text by again using the left mouse button and holding it and dragging it over carefully. And then we're going to move up here to our toolbar again. And this little world with a chain link, convert to hyperlink, and give it a URL. And the URL will be simply and select OK. Now let's go ahead and run it. 
for our demonstration.